And today's session focuses on technology and lawyers and what they need to know. I'm pleased to introduce today's facilitator, Chuck Onrick. As a document lifecycle evangelist, Chuck advocates best practices and tools covering the complete document lifecycle. Chuck is an industry expert with over 35 years in legal IT and serves as a translator between business users and technical professionals. Just a bit of housekeeping before we begin, a webinar will run 30 minutes. Uh, we'll have time at the end dedicated to addressing questions and comments. You can enter any comments, ideas, or questions into the questions window on, window on your screen at any time during the presentation. Chuck will answer as many as uh, he can in the time allotted for Q&A. And with that, I'll pass it over to Chuck. Thanks, Steve. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, before we talk about what legal tech competencies lawyers need to have, um, let's talk about some uh, incidents where it went wrong. Here we have a situation that happened last week, actually, where a lawyer uh, defending a client involved in the Mueller investigation uh, had to ask the court for a, a delay in proceedings because they couldn't get word to work, quote unquote. Um, the judge was not impressed and neither was opposing counsel. Uh, the judge gave the lawyer one extra day to get uh, their documents sorted out. And the thing about that is it's easily prevented. If that lawyer had had a basic knowledge of Word, they would have had been able to come into court and deliver their arguments on time with the proper documentation. Uh, it would have helped if they had a good basis to work from, solid templates and documents that behaved well. Um, and even more so if they had an application that allowed them to check for problems and fix any issues. But really the basic knowledge of Word would have at least allowed them to sit down and type overnight if they had to retype the document at, at absolute worst. Here's another situation. It's again a litigation issue, um, but it highlights the, uh, the dangers and the risks associated with not understanding uh, metadata. In this situation, a lawyer uh, represented a client who gave him uh, a collection of photographs that allegedly uh, proved her case uh, against the New York Police Department. Uh, the NYPD said, yeah, let's take a look at those JPEGs. Uh, so they got a copy of the JPEGs and they took a look at the metadata and they discovered that the photos were not taken when the plaintiff said they were taken um, and actually disproved her case but did prove that she was a liar. Uh, that made the, her attorney look careless and the judge called the attorney out in public saying, yeah, you should be able to trust your client, but really you need to double check whatever you present in court as evidence. Um, that would have been easily prevented. Um, yeah, you need to trust your client, but you need to also verify that what they're providing to you accurately reflects what it's supposed to reflect, and that would have required using a metadata tool like the other side used, like the New York Police Department used. Here's another issue. Again, it's litigation, but this could affect really any lawyer sharing documentation with anyone else. Um, in this case, we had a lawyer for Wells Fargo Bank who uh, inadvertently shared a whole host of Excel workbooks that contained uh, sensitive financial data about Wells Fargo clients. Um, not only did she share that information, she shared it in a way that uh, didn't protect it from disclosure. And she only found out about it when the other side said, hey, wait a minute, you just shared your uh, client, your customer's financial data with us and you, know, you really should have secured it in some way. Um, by the way, I just want to give a shout out to the blog where I found this, Excel Esquire. Excel Esquire is a fantastic blog. It's written by a lawyer for lawyers about Excel, highlighting what they need to know about how Excel works and how it can be used and misused. So I highly recommend everyone going to take a look regularly at Excel Esquire. He posts, I think, once a month or so. That issue, uh, the inadvertent disclosure, would have been easily prevented by understanding how Excel workbooks work, making sure that you understand that what you see there may be more than one worksheet in a workbook. Um, also really important, unhide everything. Uh, it's important to understand that in Excel, you can have hidden sheets, hidden columns, hidden rows. So before you share uh, an Excel work with, workbook or worksheet with anyone, you should 
either unhide everything so you know, uh, so you can review everything that's in the workbook, or use a metadata application that protects against unintended disclosure by highlighting for you that something is hidden. Metadata is going to come up a lot in this conversation, and I'll highlight uh, something about that later on. Um, but the bottom line on this is that technical competence is not optional. Back when I started uh, in legal IT over 35 years ago, um, lawyers typically had to offload uh, technical tasks to support staff because they didn't necessarily have a computer on their desk. But now we're well into the 21st century and technology suffuses everything a lawyer does. And that's why the ABA and law societies uh, all professional organizations insist that lawyers need to deliver competent services to their clients, and part of that competence is technical. Uh, and if they don't have the skills that they need, they must ask for assistance from qualified professionals, i.e. support staff or other lawyers who have the technical skills that, they, that would help them out. So the basic competencies, the basic technical competencies for every lawyer can be broken down into basically 10 items. And another shout out, uh, ltc4.org, I'll give more details about them at the end of the presentation, um, is a great organization uh, that helps firms and lawyers get up to speed on the basics of what they need to know about technology to do their jobs. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first and foremost, uh, lawyers need to be able to create, edit, and proofread and save documents and emails properly. They need to understand what data is. They need to be able to search for it and uh, report on it, as well as manage their exhibits. Um, they need, of course, to collaborate with others. And collaboration just means sharing. It doesn't just mean uh, sharing with uh, somebody that you're working on a specific document. Um, People work outside the office all the time, and there's certain things that they must do in order to work properly when they're mobile. Uh, a lot of that is around security, but security is also about what they do in the office, not just when they're working mobile. Laws firms are businesses, and lawyers need to manage and record their time properly, and they need to send out bills that won't cause uh, their clients to question uh, what's in the bill. Uh, when they're working with their clients, they need to keep track of their clients' data accurately um, and update their, their client relationship management applications so that they have the most up-to-date information about their clients when they're, uh, when they're working with them. Not every lawyer works on presentations, but those who do really know, need to know how PowerPoint or whatever other presentation application they use, how that application works, because it can really make their lives a lot easier. And it can also prevent um, embarrassment by uh, leaving old information in a presentation that you've reused. Not every lawyer works with e-discovery or e-disclosure, but those who do absolutely must understand what e-discovery is, they need to understand what data can be contained in documents and emails um, and how to and the evidentiary uh, importance of different kinds of data. So law firms are document factories. That's what they generate. They generate information that is encapsulated in documents, whether it's a word processing document, uh, a, a spreadsheet, a presentation, an email or a PDF. They need to be able to create and save any of those uh, documents. Um, they need to be able to make changes and save as a new version so that they have a track record of how those documents evolve over time. And when they have a document open, they need to be able to identify problems like corruption, or numbering problems, um, cross-references or defined terms that aren't uh, working properly and fix them. Once they have a collection of documents, they need to be able to save them properly and find them easily. Um, every document needs to be named uniquely. It's not good enough to call every agreement you do agreement.docx. Uh, uh, um, every document should be immediately identifiable by the name you give it. So that means having a naming convention. Similarly, you need to organize your work. You need to uh, have workspaces that are dedicated to each client, for example. You can't just dump everything in one folder. 
Um, you need to be able to search for things. It doesn't matter whether you're using a document management system or just uh, uh, file folders. You need to be able to find things properly without and quickly without um, making mistakes and uh, pulling up the wrong document, for example. And you also need to make sure that all of that is secure. Uh, you cannot, it's not good practice to uh, have documents saved in file folders that anybody can access because then somebody might accidentally or on purpose uh, delete or move documents and make it much more difficult to find them. Data is crucial. Um, it's what is included, what is incorporated in documents. Uh, it's not just what you see, it's what you don't see. Um, metadata as well as data is important. You need to be able to search for data, uh, whether it's wherever you save the data in your DMS or your file folders or your databases, uh, as well as online research. Um, you need to be able to use Excel uh, if you're uh, creating due diligence reports, for example. Uh, come across a number of situations where uh, a client has required uh, their lawyers to uh, record their due diligence results in a spreadsheet that the client has provided. And that's because the client is then taking that work product um, and ingesting it or uploading into, the, into their own databases. So it's super important for lawyers to understand why the client has required this and how best to make sure that the data they're recording in Excel is exactly what the uh, client needs, not just in terms of content, but also in terms of format. Um, metadata keeps coming up and it's really important because it's it's data about your document. Um, let me just give you an example of why it's important to always clean things, for example, before you share them. This is a document that has been making the rounds. It's a sample document that um, I was given recently and just for kicks I did a uh, a, a metadata report and uh, I found a number of things. There's the built-in properties that included um, information about the original author. Um, that sort of thing is clean. You can clean it using Microsoft Office applications like the Document Inspector. But the Document Inspector uh, doesn't tell you about or clean things like VBA variables, document variables. These things are used by document automation systems. And here we have information dating back almost 20 years about another firm. I changed the names here, but um, the rest of this stuff is exactly how I got it. Um, this could, well, it's a data breach uh, under the GDPR, uh, for example. Uh, as soon as you uh, receive a document, you are owning to a certain extent all the data in that document, both what you see and the metadata you don't. So it's important to uh, have good data hygiene when you're working with documents. Um, related to that is chain of custody. Chain of custody is uh, the, well, you can see the definition right here. And it's important to understand the chain, chain of custody and how technology affects documents because um, whenever you touch a document, you change the metadata, whether or not you change the contents. And that can have a big effect on litigation or um, research. So understanding data at its basic, they don't have to be an expert, but every lawyer needs to understand what data is. Collaborating is key to the practice of law. You're always sharing documents with people with your client, with your colleagues, with opposing counsel, with uh, government agencies. Um, so when you're wor working with documents, you need to be able to understand how they evolve, what their changes are from version to version. So you need to be able to compare them and, and see and understand easily all the differences between different versions. We talked about metadata already. You need to be able to examine it, but you also need to be able to clean it automatically when you're sending email attachments, as well as when you're sharing things on removable media or you're uploading them to a, a website. Uh, you also need to be able to share securely. So you, for instance, sending an attachment so that only the person who receives it can open it and they can't forward it on to other people. When people are working uh, outside the office, they need to understand their responsibilities and what technology can help do for them. Uh, first and foremost, whenever you're working on a mobile device, it needs to be encrypted. It doesn't matter whether it's a laptop or a phone. If you have your, if you're 
willing to take the personal risk of your personal phone being lost and somebody cracking it and finding all your contacts and your messages and whatever, that's, that's up to you. But when you are representing your clients and your firm, um, you can't just rely on uh, good luck. You need to make sure that if your phone is lost or stolen, it can't be cracked and sensitive data, for instance, your client's sensitive data can't be uh, used and abused. Now, when you're working with files, you need to be, work with them securely so you can get them from a secure location and save them securely. Um, and that requires not just a secure file uh, store, but it also requires using a secure browser and a VPN. A virtual private network ensures that your uh, communications are encrypted end to end. Uh, so uh, for instance, if you're signing on to a, uh, a public network in a coffee shop, people can listen in. People, lawyers need to know that, and they always need to use a VPN, whether it's a VPN provided by their firm or one that they have as part of their, um, their antivirus protection. Speaking about security, um, basic security hygiene is critical. Uh, creating a strong password is the first thing everybody should, not, should know. Password123 is one of the most common passwords in the world. Um, it's not good enough. Uh, you also need to understand that just applying a password to a Microsoft Office document isn't necessarily security. It's really easy to bypass uh, Office passwords. Um, so they, when lawyers are sharing files securely, they need to do it by some other means, not just relying on Office passwords. Basic uh, computer literacy involves when you walk away from your screen, whatever screen it is, whether it's your mobile uh, or phone, your cell phone or your laptop or your desktop, lock the computer screen so somebody can't just walk up and read whatever it is you're doing. You have to get into a really good habit and this is um, not hard to do. Um, another key uh, security skill and security um, knowledge uh, is identifying what a phishing email is. Um, it's really easy for people to get fooled by emails into disclosing um, their username and password, for example. Um, so there's just some really basic uh, security skills that every lawyer must have and they must use all the time. Speaking about time, uh, law firms are businesses and they every lawyer needs to record their time accurately um, and uh, then generate bills uh, that clients won't question. So that means having good practices as well as good applications that help them re uh, record their time. Whether it's a dedicated application or whether it's using Excel, um, lawyers need to know how that application that records and retains their time works and how they can generate uh, time reports so that they can review them and edit them before they issue a bill. When working with clients, it's really important to make sure that you're always up to date on their contact details. Um, so many times I've seen people uh, think they're taking a shortcut by uh, finding a letter that they sent to somebody a month or two or six or a year ago, uh, changing the date, changing the body of the document, uh, the letter without checking the uh, contact details. People's names change, people's positions change, people, uh, firms or organizations move premises and their addresses change, people leave organizations. Um, there's no excuse for not having completely up-to-date information about every client in every document. Uh, checking your email autocomplete, this is about uh, knowing how Outlook works and if uh, autocomplete seems too risky for, to you because it might, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, suggest a, an address that isn't correct, turn it off. Um, but also it's a good idea to have an application, an add-in in Outlook that uh, reminds you or notifies you about anything that might be questionable. Not every lawyer works with presentations, but those who do really need to know how the presentation software works. Um, it's important that the uh, presentation always look good, that it conforms to house style, um, the same way every uh, word processing document should conform to a house style so that it looks good, it gives a good impression. Um, the 
PowerPoint, for example, has placeholders that kind of automate what you can insert on a slide um, so that you don't have to use extra clicks to insert things and position them. It's also important to know what speaker notes are and how to use them and how to get rid of them. E-discovery. Uh, we talked about how why it's important to understand how computers save documents. Um, and it's also important to understand how they save data about those documents uh, wherever they're saved. Um, you need to be able to use an, a metadata tool that reveals all the metadata in a document so that you can get a full picture of what uh, the evidence reveals. Um, you also under, need to understand chain of custody again. I'm a firm believer that the School of Hard Knocks is a really good teacher. Um, Making mistakes is fine, so long as you don't keep repeating them. But it's also good to know how to do things the hard way uh, in case automation, in case your helping tools aren't available for some reason. So at a basis, uh, uh, it's important to be able to use just Word out of the box, Excel out of the box, PowerPoint out of the box to create, edit, save documents. But automation is super important because it allows you to work more efficiently, more effectively and securely. Um, it makes sure that the documents that you're working with, whether it's word processing, spreadsheet, presentation, are properly formatted and well behaved. Um, and because automation uh, makes you more efficient and more effective, it increases your profitability and productivity. So by all means, learn how to do things the hard way using the basic tools, but then take advantage of automation because it will speed up everything you do. So what do you need to do? Well, um, different people need to do different things. Um, at the end of the day, it's every lawyer's personal responsibility as a professional to have the basic technical competencies they need to deliver to their clients effectively. And that means they need to ask for training, whether they ask um, the trainers in their firm or whether they go to an organization like LTC4. Um, there's lots of training available. It's, a tra it's available on YouTube. Um, LTC4, in addition, offers certification. And that's important because it gives a stamp of approval to the lawyer that, yes, indeed, you do know what you need to know, at least uh, the basics. Management, law firm managements uh, can encourage or require their lawyers to uh, get certified for the basic legal uh, tech competencies they need. And they can do that in a variety of ways, CLE credit, uh, billable hour credit, whatever. But managements uh, can help lawyers remember why competency and technical uh, in technology is of benefit to them to, uh, as well as the firm, as well as how it affects their responsibilities to their clients. Trainers and IT can work hand in hand. They can collaborate. Um, trainers can uh, help management understand why uh, technical competency is important. And they can also work with IT to help IT understand what users need. IT similarly uh, can work with trainers to understand what the business requires, and then go out and find the automation that will help them uh, do their jobs more effectively. Um, how can legal tech help? Well, legal tech, uh, particularly IT uh, departments, can go out, find the best uh, automation solutions that will help their lawyers and their firms work better. Uh, Template and document automation helps ensure that documents are well structured and behave well. Proofreading helps uh, find problems. Document repair repairs problems. Comparison helps people find the differences between versions. Metadata cleaners clean the metadata but also report on it. Uh, PDF management is super important. PDF is more and more a common file format, uh, and there's it's important to have a PDF tool that allows people not just to view documents, but also to PDF documents, but to work with them, digitally sign them, add and delete pages, uh, change the text. And also they need a secure file transfer solution that allows uh, users to, to share files securely. In terms of user interface, it's important to keep it simple. Um, here you see what we've done to encapsulate our end-to-end -end, uh, document lifecycle solutions from create and check to collaborate. Uh, and we compile them all into one tab in Word 
Um, and, you know, we see we push them over to the left here. People tend to work from the left. So the closer to the left you get, the more likely they are to see the tab. Um, and you see also that we've used functional names because that helps people find things faster. Whenever I've trained people, I've always said, you know, if you forget what you've learned in the training session, just think about what it is you're trying to do and then look for that word or something like it on your screen. So if you've got a numbering problem and you're trying to fix it or repair it, look for the word repair. Um, and by the way, we did that with uh, Ribbon XML. It's really easy to use Microsoft native technology to adjust how your ribbons behave and uh, look to make it easier for your users uh, to find things. Making it obvious is another important point. Um, every button should do exactly what it says it's going to do. Uh, consolidating functionality. Again, uh, we saw that in the ribbon, but you see it here also in uh, after the user has clicked this analyze button, for example, they get a task pane and there's a host of different things that they can check and fix all in one place. And it's important to integrate uh, technology at the point of use where people are going to use it. Here you see we have a secure file transfer uh, solution integrated in the Outlook message ribbon right above the send button. So here they've got their send op options right above send. Um, it's easy for people to find things without hunting around with their mouse. I mentioned LTC4 a couple of times. It's a nonprofit that uh, provides guidance and training plans. They don't do training, but they provide plans that trainers would find useful, uh, as well as certification uh, for uh, the core competencies that every lawyer needs. Um, so I highly recommend that people uh, check LTC4 out and get engaged with them because they can be extremely helpful. So thank you. Um, I hope that was uh, helpful. And are there any questions? Yeah, great presentation, Chuck. And uh, we do have a couple questions. Um, first one comes from John. He asks, uh, what automation applications do you think would be most helpful to lawyers who aren't comfortable doing things the hard way? Well, I'm glad you asked because we have a lot of them uh, in our uh, portfolio. Uh, the first one is uh, comparison and the second one is metadata uh, tools. Uh, ChangePro, for example, is, in my humble opinion, the best comparison tool on the market. I used to be the product manager on it, but I've done a lot of research and, and I know for a fact that it is uh, the most accurate, complete and flexible solution. Um, Metadact is, uh, I think, the most complete um, and uh, uh, customizable solution for metadata control, whether it's uh, sending applications, um, uh, send, sorry, sending documents as attachments or sharing them uh, at removable media or even doing a report. You saw the report that I did earlier about that metadata. Um, it's important to have proofreading tools. Uh, for instance, contract companion or litigation companion are both tools that will help lawyers find problems like defined terms issues or missing cross references or numbering problems uh, quickly and then allow them to fix them uh, quickly as well. Um, template and uh, document automation is super helpful because it helps people uh, work from clean, well-structured documents from the get-go. Um, we have, a, we have a host of applications that can help with that. Uh, please get in touch. Fantastic, Chuck. And actually, we're right at the top of the hour, so I'm going to um, close it there. But um, if we had any outstanding questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you directly. Um, so um, just want to thank you guys all for joining. If you're interested in seeing what other webinars we have on the roster, you can view and sign up for the full list. Um, at latera.com slash webinars. We've got a lot of different options coming out over the next month and a half. Um, and I wanna thank Chuck for a great presentation and for sharing his expertise with all of us. And then again, thank all of you for joining. We hope we'll see you on another webinar soon. Have a great rest of the day. Okay, take care, bye-bye.